Discover NAB Show, the ultimate destination for media, entertainment and technology professionals. Explore innovation and connect with industry leaders right here in Las Vegas. So, Peter, it's day one of NAB 2025. Are you excited for the show? Oh, yeah, I should be. After so many years that I've been here, I should be excited. I know that I'm not overly excited as a person, but yes, I am excited for my company, of course. Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. So, tell me a little bit about AEQ. How are you positioned in the broadcast and media industry? Well, we are a a little bit of a strange company because we touch so many different areas actually. We're mainly in audio and communications but we also touch areas in video and we also touch areas in automation and stuff like that. So we are a bit of a, yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot to offer. And we're normally uh, addressing the small mid segment of the market. So. so the last time we saw you was at IBC. What's been happening since then? Tell us. Well, we're launching a couple of new products, a couple of new products that are actually a sequel to our already existing stuff or an add-in to our stuff that we're doing, for example, for intercoms. For the intercoms, we, we actually have a new belt pack that you can have a look at later. <laughs> but anyway, it's a belt pack that is using wireless technology in 5 gigahertz and the open band. And we have a very good reach with this one. It reaches actually 600 meters in line of sight. And this is really helpful to us because one of our weak points, if you talk about weak points, used to be our uh, wireless uh, part of our intercom systems. So that's a, a very nice adding to our family of intercom products. And I can see here you have a mixer as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's our... This is actually capital IP plus. So we have the, the smallest of our digital consoles and audio over IP enabled consoles is the capital IP. And it has it started at eight faders. Now this one is an intermediate solution uh, with 10 faders and it has a little bit more features. We're also using PoE. And we're adding features like Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, we're adding a secondary headphone outputs on the actual control panel. We're having uh, a touch screen on the, as a main interface in the control section of the console and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, a, it's an already existing product, making it retrofitable to our installed incumbent systems with the capital frames and the M core frames. And this one is the, the one that we are projecting our next like five, six years of future. For, that's exciting. And uh, tell us about your Solaris product here as well. Oh, you do remember that one. That was actually introduced at the IBC to you. Um, Solaris is evolving now. We are changing the frame a little bit, but it's still a multi, multi codec system with up to 64 codecs, stereo codecs in one unit height. And it has a total of eight uh, network interfaces, allowing us to have a lot of redundancy. We can distribute and use uh, these codecs for contribution on a wide uh, number of uh, networks. So great, great product. And what other updates are you showcasing yeah, here? Okay, so also being a radio company, in essence, uh, we're also showing a new uh, visual radio system called Radio Visual Plus. We do everything in plus, don't we? <laughs> Official Radio Plus is, a, is an integration. Basically, we can offer an integration with a video switcher uh, and they, is, they are seamlessly integrated with our consoles and also our network interfaces, like uh, uh, format interfaces and format converters. So we can basically run the visual radio from any input source. It doesn't have to be a microphone. We can actually use a, an, a line input to trigger clips and other stuff. And then camera positions, of course. And who is your target market and what are the future use perspective cases of all your products here? Well, as I said at the introduction, we, we are addressing the small mid segment of the market we're not going for, we haven't been going for the big ones, but of course we have products for the big ones as well. You can grow very big with our systems as well. But entry market for us is the small, medium-sized broadcasters, uh, preferably with a with a need to have a advanced uh, advanced product, 
but are sensitive on price, for example, but they also need a lot of features. So, yeah. And what are you seeing happening in terms of trends in the marketplace right now? What are you doing to meet the needs of those trends? Oh, it is a bit of a difficult one though, because right now the market is in a transition. It is really changing. And I'm not saying for the worse or for the best, but it is changing. We see that radios, for example, um, we're getting less and less audience with radio because old timers like myself, we, we listen to radio, but you young people, you don't listen to the radio any longer. You just go around listening on something on your, on your cell phone, on your smart devices. So we have to constantly find niche markets that are sort of addressing that and, and to make sure that we can survive in a, in a, a market that is imploding sort of in terms of radio stations you know, and radio networks. The traditional way of doing radio is changing, changing quite a lot. So Peter, what does the future hold for AEQ? Well, I hope it holds a lot for us, to be honest. No, seriously, I think it's, it's good for us. We, we stand on a, on a broad platform of products and we have a, many years in, in, in this market. We've been existing since 81, so quite a few years. And uh, we just need to adapt and change like the market is changing and that's it. So I think we have a lot, we still have a lot to offer and we still have a lot to take out of the market, of course, in a positive way, <laughs> certainly. Well, I'm wishing you a fantastic show here this year at NAB. Really, thank you for that. Thank you so much.